thanks for tuning into Talking Point. I'm your host, Neerat Shah. Um, the PSU rally has caught a few people by, sur sur by surprise, maybe. But if you've heard a lot of market experts over the last three to six odd months, some of them have been talking about the possibilities of this happening, not just because of the valuation factors, but possibly also because of a change in stance from the largest shareholder, which is the government, about how it goes about its asset sales. Now, lots can be spoken about, but I think it's best to get somebody who looks at this pocket very, very closely and get his sense on what does he, what does he feel about the way some of the PSU stocks are making a comeback. What is his sense on the valuations versus the technical factors? And how does he feel investors can go about participating in his rally if he believes it is worth participating in it? Sanjay Pare of of Nippon Asset Management really needs no introduction, but joins in right now. Sanjay, uh, thanks so much for taking the time out and speaking to us. This is Neera Jair. Good morning. Good morning. My pleasure. I, I believe amongst other things that you do at Nippon, you also very closely look at the PSUs. Is it true? Yeah. I mean, over years, yes. Uh, you know, it's part of our overall research that we do as fund managers. Okay, great. So Sanjay, tell us, how do you feel about this current rally that we're seeing in the PSUs? Is it technical in nature? Is it a catch-up rally because that was that one pocket which had just not participated? What do you feel about it? Yeah, so uh, Neeraj, you know, one thing is you rightly said, uh, uh, one, the first part was undervaluation. I mean, if you take uh, versus Nifty today, um, on price to book, on price earning, on EV EBITDA, on dividend yield. Uh, I think on price earning, price price to book, EV EBITDA is almost at 50-60% discount to the nifty valuation. Um, uh, then uh, on dividend yield, uh, I think nifty is at 1%, 1, 1 uh, but if you take the CPSE basket, not the, all the PSUs, they're at, on FY20, they are at 8% dividend yield. Uh, and that is that particular basket. Then when you look at the implied returns on Bloomberg consensus uh, uh, on one year, 12 month target prices, the implied return on Bloomberg consensus today on that basket is 23% uh, versus uh, uh, much less at 3% or so for Nifty. Now, obviously, there were some challenges um, in, this, in this PSU space. One, as you rightly said, uh, the supply of persistent supply of paper through CPSE did not go well uh, because obviously all existing investor it was getting diluted because every successive you know offloading through CPSE was happening at a lower price uh, so it was certainly having uh, uh, you know definite pressure on existing holders there was deep value as I explained uh, but that was one issue the second issue very clearly the government you've seen you know respected sir from Deepam. Um, making some very good comments uh, in terms of uh, proper payout policies, recurring dividends, higher return ratios, capital location in synergetic areas. Um, now, these are all work in progress because the operating managements have to uh, obviously, you know, uh, um, uh, move in that direction. Uh, but, you know, CapEx is required, but a non-synergistic uh, allocation was not going well. Um, so, uh, and when you see the return ratios, uh, the return ratios versus Nifty, uh, you know, it's not very inferior. On FI23, we were seeing the ROEs of this basket was 12%, while for Nifty, it is 14%. So, if you, we objectively see uh, there is an undervaluation, but it had to be catalyzed through the largest shareholder saying, we are now constructively supporting you. We take the point that there has to be wealth creation. There has been serious wealth destruction over the last 5 and 10 years. Uh, and these companies have inherent strengths. And also, there will be in a lot of them stability of profits and some growth. Um, and behaviorally, there was a lot of apathy. There is under ownership. There is apathy. People don't want to look at it. Yeah. Uh, so the behaviorally also it was very very well poised, and that's why we believe now when the change to the catalyst of government doing the right things, um, I feel there is a scope where the risk return is quite favorable. 
Hmm. So, uh, would you reckon that uh, so, somebody is making his point, Sanjay, that uh, that I'm not talking about whether these companies will return to growth path or no, but just the reversion to mean average valuations could itself be a big trigger or or a big upside for these companies. When you look at these PSUs, do you look at them bottom up from how fundamentally they are looking like, or there is a there is an equally efficient technical way to look at it because they've been decimated so badly and because the sentiment is changing. The ones which had gone down quite a bit because of technical factors would rebound as strongly. How do you look at them? Yeah, so, you know, you rightly put it. See, the first, we are fundamental guys. Uh, you know, yeah, fundamental research uh, and undervaluation was there, but that was always there. I mean, yeah. if you see 30% above the current levels, they were undervalued. But it needed catalyst. And that catalyst came in the form of the best part was government engaging with stakeholders. They were very, very positively, constructively engaged with investors, took their feedback, communicated rightly, took the right steps. If you see some of the buybacks that are recently going on, um, they are stepped in the right direction. Because this is the right time to align the capital structure when the undervaluation and if you have companies like at five times price earnings, seven percent dividend yield, one of the companies saying I'll do buyback and I can still pay dividend. And, and in one of the companies, the buyback was at almost 40 percent of the closing price. And it was a sizable buyback as a percentage of the float. So my sense is, uh, you know, very clearly the government has realized uh, and, and, and the intention is, any intention is to create wealth uh, uh, for the PSUs and it's good for the country because and eventually there is a wealth creation. It's a win-win situation. And I think government uh, stroke deeper, respected Sir uh, Tuhin Kumar Pandeji, really got it right. And I think he obviously, there is, government is, you know, totally, they, you have to engage with the operating companies, mm. get them together. So I think they're trying to do the right things. Um, it is work in progress. I, I think the capital allocation, I think investors, a lot of investors whom we respect, uh, one issue was capital allocation. You can't have a company A, uh, you know, either buying a company B, for the divestment proceeds of finance ministry or you know getting into areas which are not related even if it is small so we we've, we've tried to communicate to, uh, we means we as stakeholders and i think they are they are trying to break the right direction um, you know it's a huge uh, basket um, and we i mean if they do the right things um, and focus on return ratios um, uh, then i think uh, very very strongly uh, there is a scope for re-rating. I mean, this is this could just be the beginning, but okay. very clearly they also will have to walk the talk uh, more and more. That's true. Now, Sanjay, let's leave the CPSC basket aside for the time being. We'll come to that in a bit. Uh, purely bottom up first. Yes. Yes. These are the PSU areas wherein you, as a fundamental uh, expert, have comfort in 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 the business. Would yeah, OMCs have been the clear darlings, despite the fact that there are price controls, so to say, in place of sorts. Even though, even even though they are officially not there, but the fact that the prices are where they are, etc., and all of that, and there was some tinkering at the fag end. So OMCs have been the darlings of the market, anyways. But beyond that, there are a bunch of things, bunch of pockets as well. Where do you find the most fundamental comfort within this very wide basket? Yeah, so yeah. Neeraj, Neeraj, again, you covered some part of it. And I'll just take, tell you through that. See, one is obviously the business has to be right. Uh, there has to be some element of growth. Undervaluation is surely there. And in terms of size and its positioning in the sector, it has to be very strong. It can't be a company which is losing market share. Uh, you know, it's, it's certainly not going to go well. Um, growth rates will be lower. Uh, but if you take dividend yields plus growth, uh, let's say some company is going to grow at 5 to 10 percent, available at the dividend yield of 7 to 10 percent, uh, uh, and a price earning which is three, four times. Um, so each of them, um, not that they're just cheap, but let's say largest utility company, uh, you know, has very strong undervaluation. Uh, a transmission company, again, very, very strong. It's actually 
quite owned by foreign investors and it's a clear regular moat with a little lower growth uh, again as under valuation what you said is refining and marketing companies i think there's a huge huge under valuation as i see it um, and uh, uh, i strongly believe that uh, inherent values of these uh, are far far higher and you saw one of them acting through a clear buyback and giving a signal that my stock is undervalued and that signal was very strong uh, 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 which occurred quite well then you have some of the uh, ship building companies um, you know you see the order book and market caps and the longevity of growth um, uh, and lo- i'm talking of growth for 3 to 5 years um, uh, and there you can have some uh, undervaluation then you have some defense companies very very niche different companies um now you see the emphasis on defense and indigenization um uh, and again you know ve- operating managements have been very good in this uh, and again here there is the order books are very high and there will be growth uh, if you take a 3 to 5 year perspective and the return ratios are good uh, again they are at 7 8 times so i think there is a basket of companies um uh, and i'm not talking of the banks yet uh, or the financials that is a different piece uh, we can come to that but in the non financials uh, i think there is lot of areas where selectively you can be there there are some areas where you have to avoid them for some specific reasons but by and large as a basket there is an undervaluation yeah well let's come to financials then and with the recent announcement by canara bank please uh, you i mean a lot of people are actually again talking about the fact that while this whole transition of or this whole game of private banks stronger private banks taking market share away from psu banks is true these guys still have a market share which even if they defend uh, and the growth in the financial system would take care of the growth needs of these companies and the valuations are very cheap what is i mean one are you in favor of that argument or do you extend that argument why or why not yeah so here again um, uh, you know you need to be very very selective so let's talk of the largest psu i mean i in my 15 years um, uh, at a lower price uh, the core market cap was equal to the pop um, so if you remove the subsidiary investment value um, at around uh, at lower levels than this um, and you can't have this sort of undervaluation and it had a, you know it is it has a strong franchise with a strong liability franchise well covered provisioning cover was very good roa would move up eventually to 0.7 0.8 and then it can potential to go to 1 also and you get at uh, at 0.3 0.4 time price to adjusted book and the best part is now the book value and the adjusted book value is aligned you don't need to you know do keep cal- doing cal- calculating because there's enough provision done at 85% coverage so this is for the lead bank then you have some of them what you alluded to there are there is obviously uh, you know, there is pain uh, uh, but they are also well covered but you can't have again a company at 16000 crore market cap and its peep up next year could be 20 22000 crore now, and again coverage being high including write off at 81% so they need to provide there will be pain but the franchisee were significantly undervalued and obviously you know in a bank uh, if you have a 10 lakh crore book and if your credit cost keep being being high then peep up has no meaning so you have to take a view yeah. that at a point the provision will be lower and the peep up will flow down to profits and that to then you see undervaluation so there is work in progress obviously in the second tier larger banks things have to fall in place i can't say everything is in place but the again the apathy uh, the you know op- absolute ignorance no coverage uh, you know you i mean you can get that behaviorally that uh, there's almost a disbelief and that also you need to blend at times and you know sometimes it does matter a lot under ownership in all these areas uh, you know under ownership is very high you don't almost nobody owns except government or lic so there is scope if things change and when the india is opening up people look at opening up trades actually these can be some of these op- they can be the opening up trades 
because Absolutely. levered play, if it's rightly done in a recovery, will have much lower credit cost. You know, well, that's that's, true. that's what our thought was. That's true. Just one uh, quick uh, throwback at that, Sanjay. And every time that people have tried to believe in this PSU story, there has been a a bit of a deviation from what was believed to be the norm, right? There used to be this uh, amazing uh, infrastructure company which had all the market share for all government redevelopment projects. And we all know, I mean, you know, things didn't go quite as per plan. And Absolutely. then OMCs for the first four years of the NDA government, there was strict adherence to what everybody thought was no interference on the prices. And then uh, things changed. One of the other companies was merged with another company, so on and so forth. So every time we try to believe in the PSU story or investors try to believe in the PSU story, there is a, a small thing that comes about and shakes that belief. Um, do you believe this time around things could be different or that remains unpredictability? So Neeraj, you really pointed it very well. And this question even we had when you invest. Uh, because obviously uh, you've also been very honestly slapped at times. Um, you taken aback, um, and uh, this was a very honest feedback we had to give them um, that uh, you know, um, and the underperformance itself. I mean, you see the underperformance if you held the stock, the pressure that you would have to go through if you not allocated right. Uh, I mean, you know it as a you know. So uh, it is. I'll I'll really say uh, it is work in progress. Uh, the catalyst I believe, and I really believe that it is a win-win situation. And we explain them, uh, we, my colleagues also have done a lot of work around that a company, let's say, is doing a capex of 25,000 crores. But at, at this small valuation, at dividend yield of 6 to 12%, now when the government 10-year yield is at whatever, 5.7, 5.8, a company which government sells at a dividend yield of 6 to 12%, what is the government doing a mess giving a message? And they got it. They really got it. And now they realize that the wealth creation potential is huge by being doing few things. But this is a huge mammoth, different companies, different operating managements, different heads of government need to talk together. But directionally, the, the stage is set. Uh, I still feel what you're saying, uh, that skepticism, we have to be skeptics. And as we see it deliver, getting delivered, stock-wise, business-wise, you need to take a calculative call. Uh, but certainly what you said is absolutely right. Um, and we, as I said, you know, we need to see far more action on capital allocation through m and irrelevant, you know, improper m and what I would call. Uh, yeah. And once we see that, you will see more belief coming not only from domestic investors, but even global investors. Uh, that would be something if that were to happen. And viewers, keep in mind, I, I don't think this would be a play like the way the mid-cap play has been. It is not a three-month uh, horizon that you need to not have if you're doing these things. But Absolutely. Sanjay, that's my question to you. How do investors, retail investors participate? Would would the CPSC ETF be a, a nice way to do this? Why or why not? Or, or is there some, something else? Because I was looking at the statistics. The CPSC ETF NAV returns in the last three months have actually been pretty impressive. Yeah, but uh, so see, let's take the positive side. Yes, in the last three months, things are fine. Uh, but if you see the last three years, it's not been great. Uh, so uh, so there is an opportunity. Um, that is one instrument. Uh, uh, one is because, you know, the dividend yield itself of that basket is 8% on FY20. Let's say this year dividends may be a little less, yet you are at 6 and a half, 7, and then you'll move up, move up to 7 and a half, 8. Secondly, a little technical issue here is on a tax front. Here, the dividends that the the basket the ETF gets is reinvested into those stocks. Now, in, but if you get the dividend, you are taxable at the maximum rate. So that is a big advantage if you see, you know. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you have maximum tax bracket, then you pay almost uh, at a marg maximum marginal rate. But here it gets reinvested. So that's a second advantage from three to five year queue. Third is the interest rates. Today, you see, uh, you know, you, have, you know the fixed income returns uh, post-tax versus this. So, you know, I'm just saying you have equity, you have debt, and this is one basket where you can have some allocation. Uh, and you can, uh, it's a proxy, I'll not call it proxy debt, but it has some element of steady returns. 
and you can also get appreciation of equity because the levels i mean you can't buy at a much higher rate for dividend yield and then take capital losses here the capital risk is less for all the reasons i told you you have a steady dividend yield the businesses of each of the constituents are quite steady where there will be some growth or marginal growth but it will be and plus dividend yield so that's the combination where i think it's very attractive uh, for people to invest for 3 years um, in this basket but also look at psus outside this basket and there also there are a lot of dividend yield plays very good dividend yield plays um, and i said some of them have announced buybacks the commitment is there so then there can be a good uh, spread out that it grew but it has to be an appropriate allocation it can't be an outsized allocation i think that's one very important thing viewers appropriate allocation uh, please study the companies before you buy into them individually and yes, if you yes. do not have the time and the patience to be able to do that or the expertise to be able to do that and maybe the cpsc etf uh, might be a good option as well for all the reasons that sanjay highlighted um sanjay it was a pleasure talking to you today thank you so much for sparing the time and oh, maybe 6 months down the line when if and when we talk again uh, we might actually have some pleasant stories to say about uh, what happened in the psc pack yeah i hope so and we have to i mean clearly as i said the government has to still do a lot uh, but purely on the fundamentals and as i said the behavior and ownership and the commitment of government we are hopeful uh, but just do keep an appropriate allocation look at long term that's our, and that's what you always advise i know i've seen you so that's right thing and thank you very much my pleasure no no thank you for joining in today it's also good from a tax payer's perspective if these companies are managed better yeah. yeah thank you so much sanjay for joining in thank you and thank viewers you. i hope this was um, informative and i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did thanks so much for tuning in today